Officers say war will be catastrophic, but diplomacy isn't uh, an easy answer here either because uh, what, I, what people have suggested is sort of a freeze for freeze deal, that we could get North Korea to freeze uh, its tests and maybe even its production of nuclear missiles in exchange for something from the United States. And the question is, in exchange for what from the United States? Um, because the very things they might want us to give up are the sorts of policies that we would want to put in place to deter North Korea, like military exercises mm -hmm. or boosting our military capabilities in the region. And frankly, we could expect North Korea to cheat on any such arrangement anyway. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a preemptive strike. Uh, no one wants that. Uh, this is what Fox News analyst Ralph Peters had to say in an op-ed. Uh, he wrote that, you know, amongst other things, better a million dead North Koreans than a thousand dead Americans. The fundamental reason our government exists is to protect our people and our territory. But the dangers of a preemptive strike are what? That he could immediately hit South Korea. Well, I think that uh, most Americans would find that logic immoral that was laid out in that op-ed. But, but it's also not effective, I think, because at the end of the day, um, a war, uh, there is no real surgical strike option, I think, available to the president that could reliably take out North Korea's nuclear missile threat without, um, first, tremendous casualties in South Korea and perhaps elsewhere in the region, second, tremendous economic devastation, uh, and then third, the risk that that war would actually spread from Korea to other parts of Asia, which would be perhaps the worst case outcome for the yeah. United States. It would just be... A North Korean official promised more, quote, gift packages for the United States if it doesn't back off. This after last weekend's test of an advanced nuclear device that the Kim Jong-un regime claimed was a hydrogen bomb. Endman reports North Korea is moving yet another intercontinental ballistic missile to a launch site. We hope all relevant sides can make efforts to avoid an escalation of tensions. That hope set aside as South Korea is flexing its own military muscle, staging a live-fire military exercise at sea. As President Trump agreed to substantially increase the sale of sophisticated military equipment to South Korea and Japan. And Washington agreed with Seoul to increase the payload limit on South Korea's missiles. We believe this will be useful for responding to North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. At Monday's U.N. Security Council meeting, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley demanded the strongest possible measures against the North and issued a stark warning. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. Russian President Vladimir Putin at a regional summit branded any new sanctions useless and inefficient and had his own warning. Under these circumstances, winding up a military hysteria will not bring us good. All of this can lead to global catastrophe. The threat of a conflict with North Korea has prompted Japan to look at ways to evacuate its 60,000 citizens from South Korea. There are some 200,000 Americans in the South, including troops. While the U.S. military drills an evacuation, some here feel many will get caught in the middle. Here in Seoul, we regularly hear of threats to turn Seoul into a sea of fire. What happens when those threats start emerging on New York or Washington? I don't think there'll be much tolerance in the U.S. for that, and understandably so. In fact, what we are hearing in a nervous Seoul is that the Trump administration is a wild card as much as anything else. How the U.S. reigns in an increasingly aggressive Kim Jong-un could affect all. Brett. From primarily a, uh, a place for business and trade interests to uh, find common ground. But as you say, there's only been one thing really hanging over the forum, one key thing on the agenda, and that's been the uh, Korean crisis, the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. And uh, President Putin and Moon Jae-in of South Korea have now concluded their talks. They've done a joint uh, press conference where Putin, uh, again, as uh, Russia's position has been uh, over the last weeks and months, that diplomacy in the negotiation was the only way long-term to solve this crisis. Take a listen. It's obvious that the Korean Peninsula problem can't just be solved using sanctions and pressure. It's impossible. Let's not be driven by emotion and push North Korea into a corner.
Now, it's evident that there are some differences between the South Korean and the Russian uh, position here. The South Korean government, of course, do favor a strengthening of UN sanctions against North Korea, particularly targeting their oil sector, something that will uh, very much be seen as an escalation uh, in this crisis. Uh, the Russians, of course, have favored diplomacy negotiation long term, and that still seems to be the case. Aside from that, it's very much business as usual here at uh, the forum. Quite literally, there's delegations here from over 50 countries, several thousand people in attendance here hoping to sign uh, trade and business deals. Last year, that equaled about $32 billion, uh, so very much significant in the Asia-Pacific region. But also at the forum is the governor of the U.S. state of California, and he says that North Korea does pose a great risk to global security and that dialogue is needed. North Korea, of course, is a, is a threat nobody can ignore. This thing is moving quickly with North Korea. We talked about it. I didn't feel there was any real clear path forward, uh, but I do know this, that a close, uh, frank exchange uh, between Russia, U.S. and China and other countries in the region are it's absolutely crucial. And uh, wiser minds, I hope, will prevail and be able to move North Korea off this uh, very dangerous path that they're on. Responsibility to North Korea. The nuclear test, especially the detonation of the hydrogen bomb, is a very grave provocation by North Korea. Mm -hmm. However, I think China also... And you believe it is a hydrogen bomb? I think according to the data available by now, it looks like more likely a real hydrogen bomb, a two-stage thermonuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. And also I think China understands that North Korea and the United States really work under opposite logics. Putting pressure on either of them doesn't really help resolve their disagreements. So what do you think China should do? It seems China is under a lot of pressure because tougher sanctions meaning China would do most of it because China providing the lifeline to Pyongyang. So do you think cut oil supply might be an option on China's table or is still just uh, out of the question? I doubt that's a viable option because by cutting off North Korea's economic lifeline and pushing the North Korean government into a corner, will likely just encourage North Korea to be even more militarily productive, given that their control is being threatened. They have nothing more to lose. Uh, I don't think that's, that helps to reduce the tensions. So, and Anna, what do you think China's response should be? It seems uh, now China hasn't done anything yet, but a lot of pressure has been mounting. Well, one of the things China needs to do is kind of combat this narrative that this is all somehow China's fault, that uh, China has been trying to uh, help uh, North Korea become a nuclear power. This is uh, quite the opposite. Uh, China is, does not want North Korea to have a nuclear power. They do not want an, a nuclear arms race throughout uh, Asia. This is not within uh, any kind of semblance of uh, an aim for China. So it's ridiculous. The concern here is that the U.S., uh, Donald Trump, has decided to make it all about China mm -hmm. by declaring this as well, you know, what is China doing? Because his they rationale is that only sanctions, tougher sanctions, can work to persuade North work Korea what? to uh, drop its nuclear program. Yeah, but it's, that, that, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. And I both mean, China and Russia think that sanctions wouldn't work. They haven't worked. How long have they been under sanctions? If the sanctions were going to work, they would have worked by now. Quite frankly, the, you know, they have said themselves, we under no circumstances will give up our nuclear option. It's the only way to secure itself. Now, I, I think the issue is security. They want some sort of ironclad guarantee that their so the sovereignty of the North will be maintained, that there will be no attack on them. Uh, the question is, you know, how can this be uh, done? They will not come, to, the U.S. will not come to the table until they give up their nuclear arms. Mm. They, they say, we, without our nuclear arms, we have no leverage. We will not ever but, give but, them up. But, but do you think the Trump administration is now seriously considering either talking to North Koreans or having a military strike? 
Okay. Well, you know, you, you get mis mixed messages depending on whether Tillerson at the State Department is talking or Donald Trump tweeting. But they are considering both. Well, uh, obviously, from a political perspective, all right, uh, Trump came in and said he's a strong man, that he can handle North Korea, that he'll, you know, either have a hamburger with the guy or he'll bomb him back to this, you know, Stone Age type of attitude. Uh, so he cannot afford to look weak on this particular issue. His core base is looking at him and expecting him to, quote, do something. You know, I don't know if you saw that, uh, uh, that tape where they went around and asked people what they should do. But the do. only thing that he seems to have done is to ask China to do. More. Well, yes, he's trying to set up a situation where, to quote, whatever happens, it's China's fault. All right, China didn't do enough to do this. China didn't do enough to do that. China's concerns, as you pointed out, quite valid, uh, are quite valid. The amount of trade that uh, North Korea is doing has been decreasing. But the issue isn't whether somebody in North Korea buys a, a sweater from mm. <laughs> uh, China. The issue is uh, how are they getting their money. Now, mm -hmm. if you go to where uh, where North Korea is doing it, they have set up little businesses around the world. They they basically will provide uh, very, very cheap labor and they collect the money for it. Uh, they have restaurants, bars, all so, sorts of things, including in India. So do you think, um, John Holm, that the Chinese side has communicated this message to the Americans enough that even if we push Pyongyang to the corner, even if there's the toughest sanctions, they won't drop the nuclear programs. Every Only by having Americans and North Koreans sit down and talk, we can probably solve this. I think China is trying to explain in that logic uh, to the United States. Uh, look, the U.S. doesn't have a good strategy in case North Korea is cornered and becoming even more provocative. How do you deal with that situation? Apparently, the United States haven't thought through those questions. It is only reacting intuitively uh, to pressure with more pressure. Uh, certainly, I think, uh, hopefully, more direct discussion with the United States uh, could talk more sense into Mr. Trump, but we don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, there are deep psychological barriers for Mr. Trump to change his thinking. But, but they, they, first off, I just want to throw in there, this is not a misunderstanding by the U.S., all right? You think there's a deliberate strategy? This is v very deliberate. We, everybody knows that there are no safe outs. I mean, what you, you had Steve Bannon saying, look, you know, South Korea is their hostage. You're, you're playing with millions, potentially, of South Korean lives if this thing, uh, if we actually went there and did, did something. So Trump is trying to paint this purely as it's China's problem. Mm. China has to solve it. If they don't solve it, whatever happens, it's not our fault. He's trying to avoid any kind of complicity in whatever is to follow. But he understands that China would never cut oil supply to Pyongyang because that will cripple that country. They understand. And put a humanitarian crisis on the Korean Peninsula. They, un they understand that this could push a regime change that would have a bloody uh, civil war and in, unfortunately in this one they would have nuclear weapons uh, at their disposal. You don't know who gets in and what happens. The flood of refugees is obviously a big issue for China. I mean we, we see what happened in Syria, we've seen what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan and the kind of situations that happen when you try to destabilize a country uh, from the outside. So this is China's concern but at some point China has to come and say look what are we proposing? What can we do that's out of the box? C continue on the same line isn't working. Right? There has to be some way in which perhaps Russia and China say uh, to North Korea, we guarantee your existence, all right? but you must, must, and that is not up for things to get rid but of But we have to have kind of a friendly gesture to start everything. What about the double freeze program? It seems the Americans are no, in no mood to accept the double freeze because it sounds like kowtowing to an outlaw state like uh, Pyongyang. Right, I mean, uh, there was recent revelation that uh, the past May, uh, during the Track 1.5 meetings between former American officials and incumbent North Korean officials, North Korea again proposed 
to suspend their nuclear missile test in return for the suspension of the joint military exercises. And that proposal was again mm. declined by the United States. So I do think the inflexibility on the part of the United States to consider the option of modifying or even scaling down their joint exercises but, but, is the biggest barrier. But the picture is different now because North Korea has already successfully tested ICBM yeah. and now it has another round of nuclear tests. It can probably harm the United yes. States. That's the North Korean logic. Their perception is the reason why Americans don't want to talk is they have they not been convinced yeah. about North Korean capabilities. So North Korea has to more and better demonstrate their capabilities. That's why we are seeing yeah, more ICBM that, that, and even that, nuclear tests. But that, that is a dead end road. The, the, U, the population of the United States, Democrat or Republican, the main body of them would be quite happily um, support any kind of preemptive strike given that North Korea is proven to have a, nu a nuclear capability and also a delivery system. Mm. This is not something, this is something that is universally felt. I mean, North Korea has been spewing venom against anti-Americans, saying that they would attack America, that, you know, there would be things. They've had videos on TV showing mushroom clouds over Washington. But you uh, think Washington. this blustering? Well, it, no, the U.S. will do this. This is the problem. You have two trains speeding head on at each other, and there no, does not seem to be a switchman. But it seems they're practicing brings them in ship. North Korea doesn't really want to strike the United States. That means suicide for Pyongyang. Yes, but the, the, the way that they're trying, they're going about it is not politically acceptable to the American people. The idea that they would have a nuclear bomb and missile delivery system mm. is absolutely, is in the American minds, justification for going in and doing a preemptive strike. Okay, uh, now we have um, Mr. Kim on the line. Uh, Mr. Kim, uh, the South Korean President Moon Jae-in has talked with Russian President of Vladimir Putin in Vladivostok. Uh, it seems that South Korea has some different opinions with the Trump administration on how to deal with this, because Trump called South Korea's uh, new president's policy as appeasement towards the North. What is South Korea's calculation after the testing of nuclear bomb? the new nuclear bomb test in, in, in Pyongyang. Okay, I think there is not different between the point of Korean government and American government. The main point, we understand that North Korea also wants to talk with Korea. The problem is that this is not on time. So President Moon Jae-in and now is putting strong sanctions on North Korea, but Moon Jae-in Think if North Korea gives the answer to the nuclear issues, he will already be willing to be communications with North Korea. Mm. It is only natural that President Moon Jae-in passed the natural security against North Korea's recent provocations. But uh, nowadays, in Korean society, some people want to uh, cooperate with the United States and gay, give uh, North Korea uh, hard sanctions. And there is another thing that is uh, more worrying, especially for China, that uh, South Korea is putting more anti-missile launchers, uh, the THAAD system uh, in South Korea, and more importantly, even the opposition party is considering bringing back tactical nuclear weapons to South Korea. How realistic will that be? Yeah, but we already talked about that issue, but we cannot bring in nuclear weapons to Korea. Because if we uh, bring nuclear weapons into Korea, there are some happens to the uh, power, balance, power balance among Northeast countries. Looks like we uh, for example, uh, Japan also wanted to mm. do that. And the other country, uh, perhaps it, we cannot say uh, it is correct or not, perhaps Taiwan also wanted to do that. So, uh, we very concerned about the power balance in Northeast Asia. So, we wanted to do some strong sanctions 
uh, to North Korea. So uh, we also hope uh, China also join with our sanctions together. And you think that President Moon Jae-in also aware of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moon Jae-in also don't want to bring any uh, nuclear weapons into Korean Peninsula. All right. Uh, thank you, Professor Kim. Uh, we'll take a short break, and I'm watching Dialogue here on CGTN. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Might be consequences all over Northeast Asia, because there, now there are talks in South Korea about bringing back uh, technical nuclear weapons. Maybe Japan is even considering that, because uh, nobody can solve the issue of North Korea's nuclear program. Is that possible? There's going to be an arms race, a nuclear arms race in Northeast Asia? Well, in terms of nuclear arms race, I think it's less likely to happen compared with conventional arms race. Even though there is increasingly popular support both in South Korea and Japan about pursuing their own nuclear capabilities, I think the uh, cool-headed officials uh, still very much oppose the idea mm. because that will bring about huge political, diplomatic, economic consequences for their countries. So I don't think it's likely that either of these countries will seriously pursue nuclear weapons. That said... And of course that's the last thing China wants to see. Uh, uh, absolutely, that will greatly undermine China's security environment. Mm -hmm. With that said, I think both countries, Japan and South Korea, will invest much more in their conventional military, military capabilities, including offensive and defensive capabilities. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, we will see a much greater uh, level of arms race. Uh, and those deployments will affect China, Russia, and these countries will uh, be bound to respond very strongly. So I'm very concerned about the great major powers dynamics mm. going forward. Okay, now let's bring in uh, some Europeans' perspective. And we're now joined by Dr. J. E. Hall, Associate Fellow, uh, Asia Program, Royal Institute of International Affairs. Uh, so, Mr. Hall, uh, you are a European, so you 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 must be better cool-headed in in this. Uh, what do you think the international community should respond, respond to DPRK's recent hydrogen bomb test and should the Europeans do anything? Um, I'm always a bit worried about the term international community. It's, <laughs> a, it's a useful shorthand but I'm not quite sure for what. There's many countries in the world who take very little interest in these vast important issues such as the nuclear question on the Korean Peninsula. Mm. And they're not united against North Korea, whatever... Some but there is the possibility think. of North I think Korea selling is that nuclear weapons to the rest of the United States world. nor North that Korea should worry are ever going to get what they want, which is total security. The Korean Peninsula has seen one major war in, in, since in the last 60 years. It's left a divided peninsula. It's left two hostile countries facing each other. Until recently, the United States could feel that it was never going to come under a likely attack, although I remember very well the Cold War and the, the sense that there might be a nuclear war. I remember I was in, at university in 1962 when the Cuban Missile Crisis took place and we all retreated to the basement just in case well that passed but again that and do you believe the now States the always hoped north korean nuclear crisis is on par with the cuban crises no i don't but i think it has the potential to become a similar sort of crisis i don't i although your um, other colleagues there indicated that they thought that North Korea now had the ability to strike the United States. I think one has to have a few caveats on that. I, we've seen they can fire rockets and they can fire them considerable distance. They claim that they have both a nuclear device and one that is small enough to go onto one of those rockets, one of those missiles. There's no real evidence that that is so mm. or that they can actually accurately deliver a rocket you could fire something in the direction of the United States that might never get there or might get there but not where it was intended to do. So I think one has to be hold back a bit and, uh, from making assumptions about how efficient 
North Korea is at what it claims to be doing. It's very good at claims. This is not the first time it's claimed to have a, a hydrogen bomb. It's certainly not the first time it's claimed to be able to hit the United States and destroy targeted American cities. Mm. There's no evidence for either. But of obviously, them, really. this is the intention of Pyongyang, and it is running in that direction fast. If that is the case, it I, will be I too agree. late to make I, any preparations. Well, that leads you back to what you do about it, doesn't it? And that what you do about it, I, I tend to agree with those uh, who say, well, the, the, the military option is both dangerous and uncertain. It's certainly dangerous in terms of the numbers of people who might be killed, the economic destruction in East Asia, and therefore worldwide, given the, the role of East Asia in world economic matters. But also, the North Koreans, as I know, and as most people know, are past masters at hiding material, hiding stuff underground. And though we know some North Korean military sites, nuclear sites, I don't think we know them all by any mm. means. Mm. And so a, a surgical strike, or uh, call it whatever you like, would not guarantee that there wasn't still the possibility of some form of North Korean retaliation. Mm. And I think that is much more likely to be aimed at North Korea's near neighbors, Japan and South Korea, than it is to be at the United States. So if, uh, let's come back to our studio discussion. What is the DPRK's calculation at this moment? It has tested ICBM, it has tested another hydrogen bomb. It seems its aim is to bring attention to its problem, but what exactly it is getting at? I think, you know, theoretically, North Korea doesn't need to have a full-blown uh, nuclear missile capability. Its nuclear missiles don't need to be 100% reliable mm. to constitute a credible nuclear deterrence. Uh, as the professor from, from London just said, I don't think North Korea's enemy, the United States, can count on North Korean missiles won't work. Mm. They will treat the threat very seriously. In that sense, even a rudimentary nuclear capability will be enough for North Korea. But now we see North Korea continuing on with more advanced nuclear bombs, uh, thermonuclear weapon, and much longer range uh, ICBMs. So what is North Korea getting at? Why is it developing such capability? I think one important reason is the U.S. has declined to talk with North Korea. So you're saying about, that they're trying to get the Americans to talk to them. Right, about freezing their capability. Therefore, North Korea wants to de demonstrate that they indeed have already obtained a very capable uh, missile and nuclear program. There is no way the U.S. can force them to give up. That's their way of uh, making the United States face the reality mm. and come to the negotiating table not to talk about North Korea giving up their existing capabilities, but, more. but hopefully preventing the capabilities from but further But this is improving. something the Americans won't accept. Accept a negotiator partner as a nuclear power such as DPRK. No, absolutely not. You have uh, two children on the playground. And but there's no other options. Now North Korea is a nuclear nation. Uh, and as I, I'll reiterate my point, from the U.S. perspective, there will be no nuclear uh, mutual assured destruction threat from North Korea. There will be some sort of action. Uh, it will probably cause a, a tremendous amount of devastation. But what you see here is Donald Trump setting it up to be China's fault. We only did what we had to because we were forced to. This is the narrative that I'm most worried about. And do you think the rest of the world still believe that the Americas can fault in China for the mishandling of the nuclear issue on the Korean Peninsula? No, and to the contrary, China is taking increasingly higher price for imposing pressure on North Korea. As a result, China is being increasingly threatened by North Korea. So China risks turning the North Korea-China relationship into an adversarial relationship mm. and adding one more nuclear enemy on China's doorstep. And a deteriorating relations with South Korea. It's exactly. also another cost. Yeah, but this is exactly what North Korea is trying to do. They want to isolate China as much as possible so that China has no, no choice mm. but to uh, somehow remain independent on this issue. So, Mr. Kim, uh, it seems that Pyongyang is trying to 
plays a wedge between all the powers, China and South Korea, China and the United States. What is South Korea's thinking of, of this? It seems we have lost uh, Mr. Kim. If that is the strategy of Pyongyang, what should be China and South Korea's response? Well, I don't, I don't know that buying more missiles and toys from the United States is going to calm this thing down. But from a populist point of view, if you're the president of a country and you're being threatened with nuclear destruction and you do not act to defend it, you will be quickly not president. Uh, you could have a coup, I mean, if people really felt it. So Moon is under tremendous pressure. He tried to open up the door. He tried to say, look, let's have uh, negotiations. He was flatly refused. Mm. North Korea just says, you're a stooge of the United States. We yeah. want one-on-one -on -one party talks with the U.S. The U.S. is unwilling to do it. But North Korea cannot expect a better partner from South Korea than Mr. Moon. They don't care. They see this uh, issue is between uh, Young Kim thinks that he has to talk directly to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not willing to talk to him. So, what is going to happen? Uh, Donald Trump and his uh, administration it seems in no mood of talking uh, to Pyongyang. Uh, he's, um, UN Chief uh, Ms. Haley said that uh, simply North Korea is begging for war. Yes, if we look at the history, there has been no precedent in which a country that already obtained nuclear weapons could be forced, could be coerced into denuclearization. Mm. I think sooner or later, people have to come to face the reality that North Korea won this competition. Yeah. They beat us, they, we failed to prevent them from getting there. Actually, if we look at the U.S. position, their positions are being softened over time. Originally, the U.S. position is we'll never talk to the North Koreans unless North Korea takes substantive steps to roll back mm -hmm. their capabilities. And later on, Tillerson once said that right, several weeks right. ago. And later on, the position became, OK, North Korea, you need only to commit to the goal of denuclearization. And the most recent position is, OK, North Korea, as long as you stop nuclear and missile tests for a while, mm. maybe we can talk. Mm. So North Korea is actually getting there. It's successful in lowering the American preconditions for, for talks. Yeah. So hopefully And raising the bar for right. zone negotiations. That seems to be a winning strategy for Pyongyang. And it's a losing strategy for China. And the if, rest of the world has to come up with something to yes, counter this. But if, he ha if North Korea has nuclear weapons, it's only a matter of time before Japan and South Korea follow. Right. They have all the technology to do it. All right.